Yeah, if you want to do something about refugee problems uh, today, both for Europe and for the world as a whole, there's two pretty, pretty obvious things you can do. Um, the first is 80% um, of all refugees are in the, in the third world, are in poor countries, and the, the West picks only up uh, half of the bill. So you could basically pick up the bill and stop uh, systematically underfunding uh, refugee reception in the region. To give just one example, uh, for Syrians, uh, for 2019, only 21% of the amount of money needed to host them during this year has been uh, collected. And it's, I mean, the, the year is all, almost halfway through. So simply picking up the bill to, to, so as to allow refugees to stay in the regions where they are hosted uh, would be a, a good thing. A second important idea is that if you don't want people to come spontaneously, uh, which at some times lead to chaos, like in 2015 in Europe or now at the US borders, you should resettle people. There are people, millions of people in refugee camps, and um, essentially rich countries are not um, inviting refugees to come to Europe and North America in a regular and organized manner. Once you start doing that seriously, um, you reduce pressure on refugee camps. People, if they know there's a credible resettlement program, they will not spend money and potentially lose their life on the journey to Europe or North America. And they will either be allowed to remain in the, the, the countries where they are now, or they will be allowed to travel to Europe and North America and Australia in an organized and prepared manner. Now those are two pretty obvious fixes that can be used to, uh, to, to do much better with refugees than we do now. And the good thing is the international legal framework for that already exists. We have a, a refugee deal that's, uh, that's almost 70 years old. It's called the Refugee Convention from 1951, simply applying the principles in that convention would take us very far 